gentlemen, welcome back to the No Food Seats on the Make It Circuit Crime Fighter. We're still in Jerseyville, Illinois. Uh, we just finished uh, Rampage Championship Wrestling tonight. Join me now, the get the promoter of Rampage Championship Wrestling, Mr. Frank Reed. Well, How are you doing? Sir? I'm I'm a little cooked on a hard night. Good show. Had a lot of fun myself. Hope you enjoyed it too. You just got beat up by uh, <laughs> three guys in Halloween masks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who? Were those guys? I don't, I don't know. I don't know where they came from, Grand I don't know. It's part of the show. I, you know, you know I, I don't know. I don't know where they came from. <laughs> I have no well, idea. Well, the main reason I'm here today, since um, you've been one of the more successful promoters in Central Illinois of late, managing to draw more fans to the show than most others. Although tonight, the only there was only 80 people in the house. Yeah, I guess crowd. there was other shows running in a concert downtown, but and beautiful weather. Would like to learn the skills and techniques uh, you, you utilize in drawing those fans that other promoters haven't been doing. Because lately I've been seeing a lot of crowds with or a lot of shows with stacked cards and only 50 to 75 people show up. What can you teach me about how to effectively promote a wrestling show? Well, I don't know if it's teaching, it's just kind of giving general ideas and opinions and thoughts. And how to promote wrestling and how to promote yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, my job is to go out and successfully fill the building. And building, if I can't do that, well, you know, as a promoter, you shouldn't be doing it. But tonight was a weak crowd. But once again, there's a lot of things out there that cause it. But I believe in the old school way. And the old school is going out, doing the posters, knocking on doors, going out and visiting people, and putting the posters up and hand flyers out at all the gas stations, fast food restaurants, and that and just talking to everybody about wrestling. I mean, a walking billboard advertisement. The internet, and I'm not too savvy on the internet, I think everybody that knows me knows that. Yeah, it's <laughs> usually I have to uh, find it out about a Rampage show is just as bad as pulling teeth. Well, I got a big surprise for you coming on that a little later on, but... Uh, well, I saw the last, this show tonight, there was a poster done up and yes. it was distributed. Yep. Yeah, the posters get out, and usually on a show I usually put out three to 500 handout posters. Mm -hmm. And usually myself, or an associate of mine usually puts them up. We don't count on a young person or that to put them up because, you know, after a while they're going to get tired, they're not going to do it. And if it's my money, my time, and whatever my name I have is out there, i got to make sure the posters are out there. Same with handout flyers and talking to people at restaurants, gas stations, wherever you go. Put the posters out and get the word out. Uh, Maybe a newspaper ad or something on, on the television, local cable station and that, which doesn't cost that much really. Uh, going on the high power networks to put your commercial on there during a WWE show might work, but I don't really think it has the same effect as going on a local network cable station. Uh, the internet, everybody seems to like that internet, and uh, I don't know, I haven't been sold that the internet brings fans into the, to the area now. I really haven't been sold on that well, yet. Well, most of your uh, <laughs> career as a promoter, there wasn't internet. No. It's <laughs> only been... <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I think the World Wide Web came into <laughs> wide use around ni uh, 95, 96. And I, it's 2009. Yeah, yeah, and I started back in 1987. 1987, long before that. And actually, that's real quick. I'll tell you a quick story. I was working uh, at the YMCA in Northwest St. Louis and uh, worked as the activity director for adults and, and uh, youth. And I had a young man, well, not a young man, middle-aged man come in. He was telling me he was a wrestler. His name was Kevin Selby. His real name, he was called Casey Cowboy. And he kept telling me he was a wrestler. And, of course, I was a wrestling fan, too. And I kept saying, yeah, well, yeah you're a wrestler. So I went to see one of the shows downtown at, at uh, Crime Alert Sunday Morning Athletic Club down on Loughborough. And I kind of really got hooked on independent wrestling, which I was I enjoyed watching wrestling on television at. So I suggested to the YMCA, because they were looking for a fundraiser, to do a wrestling show. And they went, good idea, do it. Okay. Well, I talked to uh, KC Cowboys promoter down there. We put together a pretty good little independent card. But we needed something bigger. So I contacted Larry Matasek, and we got King Kong Bruiser Brody and Abdullah the Butcher. And I got a gym in, in Rittner School District, and pop, pop, pop. I had no concept what I was doing. I just put the posters all over the place. And lo and behold, we had a thousand some odd people. The YMCA made money, and I got a pat on the back. Thank you. 
And when the show was over, the independent wrestlers were all coming around going, wow, you got to do this more often. I got hooked. <laughs> Everybody and their mom wants to be a wrestling promoter, and it's just. It's what not are you thinking. That? It's, well, first, it's not fun. Well, it is. It is fun, but then. You know what you're doing. <laughs> well, you know what? Use that phrase. But a lot of the promoters now are, are people that are wrestlers as well. Mm -hmm. And to be a wrestler and a promoter is a tough line. To carry because once again you've got your job, you got your life, you got your family that you live with and, and you love, but then you're a wrestler and then to be a promoter at independent level, that's tough to do because you gotta juggle your lineup, your roster to make sure you're not playing favoritism to yourself. And a lot of times that's what happens. And then to divide your talent from yourself too. And once again most of the promoters get into it because they want to be a wrestler. If they want to be a wrestler, the interest. Yeah. yeah. If they want to be a wrestler, go out to an organization and become a wrestler. If you want to be a promoter, be a promoter. Try to put all your efforts into becoming a promoter. You know, honestly. The Cell Central Illinois, there really is only one promotion that's not run by, or it's not direct. The promoter is not doubling as a wrestler. And only one. And what, who is that? That would be SLW on Matt Two. Matt Two. How many people they put in these seats? Are they doing pretty good? I'm, well, they're struggling like everybody else, unfortunately. Well, it's the economy, too, though, Crime Fighter. It really is. The economy's tough out there. And, and the people see wrestling on television, and then they go independent wrestling. Well, I don't know. But once they go out and see it, they'll get hooked on it. They really will if they're really wrestling fans. And, and they got to stretch well, that dollar. That and a major glove of shows. Oh, yeah. gone last year, I calculated how many shows and listed all the fits on it's a 39 different shows. 39 different shows. Patrick Brandmeier, my uh, colleague at the St. Louis Wrestling Theater, he's <coughs> gone to at least, I think, 50 shows last 50 shows year. Last year. Well, I'll tell you what, I can beat you one time. 1997. Well, you, well, 1997. you can't count your own fed because you're the promoter. 1997, we did 78 shows in the state of Missouri. Mm -hmm. That was something. That was fun. It's something I can look back on, and it was, it was quite a feat. We had a lot of fun, good run in that, but... Man, I would not do that again in this age. No, there's no way. No. Well, Missouri doesn't have uh, all that much in wrestling action because uh, of uh, regulations. That's true. We're That's coming true. ahead here. But okay, sorry. Didn't mean to do that. We're going to cut ahead and do okay. that. Your thoughts about Missouri and the way the wrestling is regulated should... I mean, it's just hardly race running in there most of the time. Yeah. Well, I guess we can count the WWCW down in the... Boot Hill. Yeah. And then uh, the occasional. Well, the ones that hang around St. Louis, they kind of go, do half and half. Right. Although most of them run in, on the Illinois side of the river if they can. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I was a licensed Missouri promoter for a lot of years, and Missouri has regulations just like laws in cities and states, and honestly, I thought they were at one time over extreme, but once again, they were there for a reason. And perhaps maybe Illinois should have them too, because it governs. You have to have certain certain things to be qualified as a promoter. Just to go out and buy a ring and say I'm a promoter, I'm going to do a show next week, and that's exactly what can be done in Illinois. You can put a show, I can put a show on here tomorrow in Jerseyville again if I want. There should be some sort of regulations. I mean, I think Missouri maybe has gone. Overboard right now. I've heard a lot of stuff about it. Yeah, but, the pregnancy test. Yeah, oh my God. but see, that would be up to a promoter. I mean, he should be in contact with his wrestlers, who are people too, and he should know what their physical health situation is. Mm -hmm. And if someone's not physically fit, that promoter is taking on a liability and responsibility by putting that person in the ring. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, a common sense by a promoter, he would know. And once again, if they want to be a wrestler so bad, they're going to hide things possibly so they can get in that squared circle and do the job. So. I think maybe Illinois should possibly someday maybe be governed again. Really, honestly, I really do. Really? Tell me the formation of the or RCW. I believe you're the second longest ranked promotion in the St. Louis area behind South Broadway. Wow. I, really I that. think that's how it is. You're, you're probably right. You know, 1987, that's, you know, 20 some odd years. That's a long time. Of course, there's been different names and we've gone back and forth with different names. Stuck with Rampage for a long time. And, uh, you know, once again, I'm pretty proud of being around the business that long. Uh, you know, uh, 
ready to run a full slate again. Mm -hmm. You know, two shows a month and possibly three coming up in the summer and that. Uh, there's a lot of talent out there, a lot of young guys want to wrestle. And if I can continue doing what I've done, you know, fairly successful, I want to do it and give these young people an opportunity to live their fantasy, live their dream, and maybe go into bigger and better things someday, possibly. And who makes up the current RCW roster? <laughs> well, it, it's kind of a, a hodgepodge from all over. We've got... Uh, of course, the main core that I've had that's been with me for quite a while, Steve Montana, who's the current heavyweight champion. Uh, yeah, he got carried <laughs> off in a coffin tonight. He did. Man, I didn't know that was going to happen. No. Uh, Steve Montana got carried off in a casket. Wicked, who's been with me for several years. He's a young man that's explosive. You know, you just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, because, how old is his manager? That, would you see that little kid up there? Yeah. Yeah, that... Little evil. I don't... I don't know if little kids should be running around ringside like that. I, I agree with that. You know, I agree. Little evil is a mean looking little kid. We need to send him to Anger Man classes too. Douglas O'Shea, who's been with me quite a year. Actually, he started back in 1996 with me, and actually, he broke his neck in 19, the early 1997. Yeah, I think he's told me that once. Yeah, and he was very, very seriously, and I thought that was the end. Definitely was wrestling, but I was really worried about his life and that afterwards. And to his benefit and to his uh, perseverance, ver 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 perseverance. perseverance, that's why you're the man. Uh, you got to give him the credit for coming back. I mean, not just in the wrestling ring, but in life as well, continuing his occupation, whatever it might be. But he's come a long way. Uh, Billy D, who wrestles as Tooth and Hutton now, the German with the claw. Uh, he's been around quite a while in that, too, it, it, as, as the background of RCW. And then you come to the people from up north in the Springfield area, Sage Ramsey, has been with me since 2002. We're still starting to infiltrate some of those people and that now, too, from the new Midwest area and that, too. And you're going to see some of them uh, joining forces with us in that quite a bit. But the roster really is kind of... It's going to take on a lot of changes because we're going to be bringing in some other people. We just recently brought in Kevin Thorne for a couple of shows. He did very, very well for himself and is really uh, an exciting performer. We're going to have some more from him too. Now, who's that guy that was in the, I guess, resemble Swamp Thing? Or <laughs> The, the Willie whatever man. I don't know. That's the first time we ever had him. Uh, Black River Jack was supposed to be a Mac. He called and said he was stuck someplace and he was sending a replacement. And I'll tell you what, that looked like uh, your front yard because I've seen your front yard need to be cut. That's what he looked like. <laughs> <laughs> Who are the highest profile guys to ever come out of Rampage? Oh, well, come on. That's an easy one. We all know Glenn Jacobs, a.k.a. Kane. And of course, of course he wrestled a number of places with yes, promotions in Illinois. Yes, he did. But in 1989, 1990, we're doing a show in Hannibal, Missouri. This mm -hmm. is the fact. This is the true story. Somebody came in the locker room, my security people, saying, Frank, this guy out here wants to be a wrestler. Well, you always get people like that. They said, talk to, I'll talk to him after the show. They said, no, you come out and see him now. Went out, there he was. And uh, the story, honestly, was he was drafted by the Chicago Bears. His knee blew out on him. He went back home to his hometown of Bowling Green, Missouri. And he came to, he saw one of my posts as handle, came to the show, boom, boom, boom. He wrestled with me through early 94, and then he met, started going all over. He met Jerry the King Lawler. And do you know what his first character was in Memphis, Tennessee, where Jerry Lawler was? It's not Angus King? No, nope, that, that was with me, Angus I King. I believe... You it never was exist. Lord Humongous. Nope. Nope, that was Sid Vicious. That's okay. Hard. That's okay. This is very seldom known. Uh, I don't remember what was... I think it's on his Wikipedia page, but... I don't. I, don't I bet it is. isn't. I'll bet it isn't. Tell me He that. wrestled Christmas weekend in Memphis, Tennessee, his first match for Jerry the King Lawler as the Christmas Preacher. Okay. <laughs> That's true. Maybe it's not on there. I'll have to look. You, you don't want people to know that, so I shouldn't be saying that, maybe. And then, of course, the other Can't one... Can't be any worse than Santa Claus. Santa Claus, yeah. The boogie movie, the boogie man. Uh, the other one is William Mueller, right now know, known as in, uh, w, uh, w E as uh, Trevor Murdoch, which recently he signed a contract, from what I understand, with TNA. He, yeah, they've he, come up with another, another ridiculous name. name that's not even worth the... If we're, not worth the trademark paper it's printed on. And what's the name? Jethro Holiday. I'm like, God, Lord. They're so desperate. 
yeah. to own something on paper. They come up with this, they just throw away yeah, all the name away. recognition they build up. Yeah. yeah, TNA, or technically even they own a copyright, but it wasn't always called. Nope. It's called uh, Trevor Rose. Trevor Rose. WLW. Well, Trevor Rose. Could have Rose. gone back to that. Trevor Rose, real quick, I'll tell you a quick story on that, how we got that name. We're doing a show in Festus, Missouri. He's been doing security for me, and that's his home, where his hometown, and he's going to get a match. And we're driving around putting posters up. And he says, you know, we really haven't got a name for them yet. And I said, well, you know, Buddy, his name is called Buddy. He did the elbow in the ring on the forehead. I said, you know, Dusty Rhodes did that. Man. You know, why don't we do kind of look like Yeah, him, right. Sort of. and, and I said, let's name him Rhodes. Do it Rhodes. He goes, yeah, I like that. And we came up with the Trevor. So that's how Trevor Rhodes' name came up. He and I came up with the driver car, put out posters, and he made his debut as Trevor Rhodes. After uh, you have a show any particular week, and all the matches are in the books, what's the biggest thing you feel you have to work on? And I can name one on this show right now, Lucky O'Shea. <laughs> Lucky, Lucky O'Shea, what? What the heck? Who's did this guy ever train to be a wrestler? What? I I don't know. Lucky is. Uh, I can't he, he thinks he's lucky. He's gonna his luck's gonna run out. He, you saw in the, in the uh, anything goes match. Somebody even threw him into the ring. Uh, lucky O'Shea is just a uh, a part of the O'Shea family that I don't think the O'Shea family wants to claim. And they're just trying to get rid of him in that. But lucky, I think the wrestling business doesn't want to claim him. Me, they don't want to claim with him. You know, maybe he can sign with that other organization. What is that name? No, I, don't, I don't know. But lucky. UBW is out business, <laughs> so he can't go there. I tell you what. I hope he don't become a promoter, starts his own organization, so he can wrestle. <laughs> oh God. So okay, there's some back here fans that could probably take him in. <laughs> what do you think I should do with lucky? Write him out of the storyline. Just completely write him out. Send him to send him the Dynamo Wrestling Academy. Dynamo Wrestling Academy. Have him be trained under Dingo and Davey Richards. Oh, do you think he'd get out of that for a weekend? He'd be. <laughs> that would probably fix the problem. <laughs> it fixes be the problem. best solution for him. <laughs> he will call me. He says, "Drink. I don't want to wrestle anymore." Oh God! You, you don't like lucky, do you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I've seen. <laughs> I told you how many shows I've seen. My standards are way high. I, I, I cannot tolerate that. Lucky I cannot All right. tolerate that. All right. We'll work on Lucky. Oh. We'll change his name, put him in a mask, be better, right? About ready to collapse. <laughs> <laughs> any interesting world stories you've had over the years? Oh, yeah. That you'd like to share? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just share real quick uh, two of them with you. With, of course, Glenn Jacobs and William Buehler. I can hear those, too. No, okay, we're doing a show. We're doing we're doing a show in Arnold, Missouri, at a uh, Lions Club, and I usually call somebody out of the crowd, maybe help bring it out with me. You know, it's kind of fun, thing. And uh, unfortunately, I pulled this one guy out, and as he got into about five or ten minutes, I realized he'd been drinking too much. Uh oh. And I went, oh no. Well, he started saying a few words that he shouldn't say. And I said, excuse me, I don't remember his name. You got to quit that, man. I can't have that. And he basically stood up. And I stood up, and of course, he's a little bigger than me. And he goes, why? Who are you? And I said, well, I'm the promoter of the guy that pays the bills here. and going to get in trouble if you continue this. you got to quit this. And uh, William Mueller, a.k.a. Trevor Murdoch, or Jethro Holliday, Holiday. is doing security. And uh, he's really nose-to-nose -nose and really getting on me. And he kind of like brushing up against me. Well, I quit. This is 10 years ago, 11 years ago. I quit. Whipped him around. And got him in a full Nelson like this. Mm -hmm. Trevor, or Buddy, or Jethro, he goes, he comes over, you got him, Frank? I go, yeah. He goes, okay. Bam! And he nailed the guy. Nailed this guy. Mm. Now the rest of security and one of my wrestlers, do you want to say his name? Nice He's a former promoter and he wrestled for me, Big Ben. He came out of the dressing room with security and they take this guy out into the parking lot. And Big Ben is Bam! And this poor guy's head down into the hood of the car. Now the cops have been called. Cops are coming. They come. They throw this guy into the car. The guy's bleeding and all this. Now he's been already punched by Trevor Rose, Trevor Murdoch, Jethro Holiday, whatever. Been slammed into the hood of the car by Big Ben. The guy's gushing in blood in the police car. And I go, you think they went too far? Well, well, well hang on. Hang on. Right. It's better. 
The police go, are you going to press charges? I go, man, look at him, man. And he rolls, they roll the window down. He says, I'm going to talk to Frank a minute. So he rolls the window. Guy's bleeding. He goes, Frank, man, I'm sorry. I didn't know what I was doing. I said, man, guys, I don't want to press charges. Let him go home. Okay. Call an ambulance. Cops open the door. Now, you ready for this? He gets out. He swings at the cop. The cops go, well, we are. They threw him back in the car. Took him away to jail. True. Yeah, it's a message ring. True story. Now, there, that's... I don't know if I should tell this one because we've had <laughs> in the Midwest a uh, two fans that decided they want to play wrestler and jump in a ring and uh, okay. they uh, got Kurt off to jail and okay. with their dad who uh, okay. had too much to drink. Uh, I'll give you one in 1990 or 91. We're doing a show at the St. Anne Community Center in Missouri and uh, Angus King, a.k.a. Jen Clint Jacobs Kane, is in the ring wrestling guy Jason Reeves was his name and he's a 6'7 mm -hmm. big guy too. They're out of the ring doing a brawl, and Al Stevens, a noted St. Louis manager at that time who could antagonize a blind person to throw things at him, is in the ring taunting the crowd all night long. Well, all of a sudden, this fan jumps into the ring and is chasing Al around the ring. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Glenn and Jason, Jason outside pounding each other, and they hear the crowd yelling and screaming. Well, I'm the promoter. What happens looks back on me. I'm the announcer. I'm saying, I jumped into the ring, did an open field tackle on this guy, and tackled him. Glenn and Jason then roll into the ring, and they start fighting each other, but this guy's in the middle. <laughs> Another police car come, and everybody kind of had to go to St. Anne's make a report on that. I just wonder what the building owners thought of all this. If uh, they decided, okay, we're not going to bring the rest of the back to this building. Well, you know that's what happens. And see, that's the thing that, once again, you can't control what a fan does on the other side of that barrier. But that's what Missouri has, and I think that's a very good law, is to have that. Once they come across that barrier, they can be prosecuted. They can be their open game. But, you know, you've got to have Illinois. There's no regulations like that. And even a rope, you know, anything, that means, hey, you're not supposed to go across it. If you do, you're in trouble. By the law, you can be prosecuted by the owners of the organization, the owner of the building, anything else. Plus, you're fair game by the wrestling. Yeah. You know? So. What promotions would you like to check out more of that you may not have had the chance to around here? Ooh, I would love to real honestly just take a whole month off and just drive and see as many promotions as I could. I mean, well, you took a month off in January. You could have done that. <laughs> you know, there's there's so much talent out there right now. My gosh, and and I look at the web a little bit. I'm not too much on that. And there is a lot of talent, a lot of organizations. And I look at your 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 website quite a bit. And see Same what's going on. wrestling match. Yeah, every week. I post four matches and, every week. And there's a lot of talent out there. And I'd like to get out and see some of the matches and be more more actively visible and seeing not just the talent, but how other things are put together. And that because it's a whole ball of wax how the promoter puts the show together and how the wrestlers perform. And once again, there's a lot of young, great talent out there all over. And I'd like to take in as many as I could. And, you know, maybe one of these days I'll put the vote and then start around looking at the promotions. I don't know. But uh, as far as Missouri, I, I, would, I would really like to see Harley Races, WLW a little bit more. I haven't seen but maybe one or two shows. And I'd like to see how, how the King does things and how he, you know, uh, uh, is working with kids at his academy and moving them on. Because let's face it, if you're going to go any place in this business, you got to have connections and go to the camps and the academies and so on. And so on. You know, to be in a couple of good places to go. Yeah, I mean, it really is. And if you're going to go any places, that's what a wrestler with any real, real talent right now needs to do. Yet, work on as many independents as he can to develop his craft and that and, and pick up good things uh, from every wrestler, wrestler that he has experience to be with that are uh, talented performers and that. Uh, pick it up, hone your trade, maybe then go to the camps and academies and see what you can do. Okay. Who's your wrestler of the year thus far? Uh, Lucky from O'Shea. Your Lucky promotion. O'Shea. Lucky O'Shea. Lucky O'Shea. Lucky O'Shea. <laughs> <laughs> from all promotions. Oh, gosh. And I, you know, I can't really say with other promotions in that. Uh, as far as respect that I have for wrestlers that have been in the business, and uh, I'm sure you know the name, and, and I'm, I know he's still wrestling over in Missouri, Gary Jackson. I probably have more respect for Gary Jackson than any wrestler that has been around in the business. And Gary's been around 20 plus years because he wrestled on my first show in 87 as well. 
but it's a devil summon Yeah, WCW. Yes, right. WWE. Yes, he did. And, and Gary is for his not just a wrestler, but as a person and what he thinks of the business and other people is what. Gosh, all these wrestlers should really go to a Gary Jackson training seminar if he ever puts them on. I mean, he, he would be something. But as far as the new talent, I can't really answer that truthfully because I haven't seen any one except for who I brought in, and of course, new Midwest wrestling, which I've heard. Well, some of their okay, let's limit to, to the group of guys that you've worked with. Uh, who do you think is the best one? Well, Sage Ramsey really stands out in my mind. He has a lot of talent. Of course, he has fan appeal up in the Springfield, Illinois area. They really go for him. And he's been around the business. He started in Windy City, I believe, what he told me, in training yeah. and that. And uh, Sage is a very, very talented performer in that. And if he wants to go on a bigger and better thing, you know, I suggest him, you know, maybe give an old heart a call or someone like that. and Because, you know, he's a very talented performer. He really is. And there are a couple other up in Springfield as well, too. As far as myself and our organization, Wicked, I mean, he's a very explosive character in that. Yeah, he beat me up. Yeah, he beat me up, <laughs> yeah. But, but he needs to hone his craft in that, and a lot of wrestling experience, that is what he needs in training. I think, you know, he could possibly go someplace. We've recently had the future, uh, Donovan, Donovan. Donovan Ruddick. Yeah, a lot of talent, I'll tell you what. That young man has got so much talent; it's unbelievable. And uh, you know, he's got been wrestling all over. Yes, I think he's gone all the way down to Texas. And, and you need to do that if you're going to learn at the independent level. And he's done that very, very well for himself. Success for himself successfully. And I think a lot of him. And I think he has the talent. He made the right connections and the right things. He possibly could do something with himself too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who do you think is ready to move on to the next level from this area? You know, we just talked about future. the future. The future, the future. You know, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I would, and I haven't seen. You know, I've heard and haven't seen Dingo uh, in quite a really while. Yeah, in a quite a while. No. Oh, you have seen, but not. For oh yeah, uh, he wrestled. Uh, the last show he wrestled for me was in 2000 in Hannibal, Missouri. Yeah, he wrestled that for one. Yeah. I have a tape of it. Very outstanding match. He wrestled uh, Rick Dustry. Great match. And yeah, I, I'll tell you what, I've got some tapes that I'll tell you what you would love look, look at because I know you're the wrestling fanatic. And I've got boxes and boxes of tapes and it's just going to waste because there's a lot of talent and a lot of uh, matches that maybe promoters would look at. Well, maybe hey, it's time to take him somewhere and put together an RCW Best Of that's something that we're in the works of, and, and when you want me to tell you that my surprise, I'll tell you the surprise too. But I mean, that can be worked out too. I think it's a good idea. Really do. A lot of matches of, of the old days, uh, Terry Bam Bam Gordy, uh, the Von Erichs. Um, they all Adams. worked for you? I've all had them at different shows. Wow. Now. Chris Adams, gentlemen, Chris Adams. I'll tell you a real quick story about Chris Adams. He was scheduled to wrestle uh, Mr. Electricity, Steve Regal, and uh, his plane, uh, what I, the story was that I got, his plane, his windshield, broke on the runway coming in and he was delayed getting to the show. And anyway, he got there right at intermission. Well, the story I got is he changed into his gear in the taxi cab from the airport to where we're doing the venture. The, uh, it was in uh, Redmond Road, the St. Louis Community Center or something. And um, he came in in his gear. In his gear, ran in the ring. That's and happened did, before. Yeah, and, and challenged Regal. They came out to the spot, signed autographs. Great match. I mean, he was really, he really put on a body show. He really did. All right, we got, we are out of time for this half hour on the right. Blade Seats. We will continue next week on this program with Frank Reed from the Conservative Crime Fighter. Check out the website, MySpace.com, and the Blade Seats. We'll see you. Thank you, Crime Fighter.